morning to you. Aaron from uh, BC SPCA. Uh, Vancouver Bird Week is coming up, what, uh, first week of May, May 6th? I believe so, yes. Okay, so it's a celebration of birds, but there's something that's happening here in Canada, uh, the bird and window collisions, and this is much more common than the average person may think. Yeah, so it's up to... A 25 million birds in Canada and up to a billion birds in North America every year. 25 million in Canada In alone. Canada, wow. yeah. Okay, so, and, and I mean, th there are so many ways to prevent these types of collisions because birds are getting injured. Uh, we're seeing uh, birds dying from this sort of thing. So where do we start to help uh, prevent this happening uh, from happening in the first place? Well, one of the first things you can do is protect your windows against bird strikes. So we have things like these high visibility decals, which can be applied. They're easy as stickers. You just peel them off and apply them to the outside of a clean window surface. So cleaning up with either a bit of Windex or a solution of about 50-50 water to rubbing alcohol, mm -hmm. and these stickers can just be applied and when it comes to windows the more the merrier so the more stickers you can get on and we do sell these on our online store so you can buy them in packs of four and they'll cover with lots of packs you can cover large surfaces of glass so they don't see them and now before we go through the rest of these I'd like to talk about the different types of birds out there and mm -hmm. the injuries that happen especially with the beaks so you've brought three different types so take us through uh, some some common birds and some common injuries that you've seen yeah well window strikes unfortunately affect all birds big and small so it could be migratory birds or resident songbirds we've seen at wild arc we've had two examples of birds that have had fractured beaks as a result of window strike collisions. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what type of bird is this we're seeing right here? This is a Wilson's warbler, so they're a migratory songbird that's present in Canada, throughout much of Canada, and, you know, even these little songbirds are affected by window strikes. Okay, and here we see a splint on the beak. Yeah, so that's a northern flicker. They're a type of woodpecker in BC, and, you know, that little guy's got a splint on his beak, so he'll be receiving treatment. And with these injuries and these splints that we see, what's the difference day versus night in terms of uh, the collisions with the windows? It affects them day and night. So during the day, the windows can kind of act as a mirror and they reflect the landscape. So if birds see a reflection of a tree or sky, that looks like a really pleasing habitat for them to fly into. And at night, when our lights are coming out and they just see the light, it can be confusing or disorienting. And they could be attracted to the light or it can disrupt their migration pattern. So a lot of factors that go into it. You've mentioned the decal, uh, the marker tape. Now, how does this work and, uh, and help prevent these injuries? So this is very similar to the window decals in that it creates a pattern all over the surface of the window and each of these kits comes with a roll of marker tape so that's about a hundred feet mm -hmm. and it includes some paper measuring tape so that you can make sure you're placing them at an appropriate distance and just this, like that this is what we're looking at uh, with the layout mm -hmm. and then we have the final product of what this looks like as well yeah yeah, so that's what it looks like when you apply it, the whole pattern over a surface of window, and that's really good for covering large surfaces. Okay, so we have decals, tape, uh, paint, or possibly even bar soap. How does that work? Yeah, so anything that cuts up the reflection, I think we've got an example of a window that's covered in tempura paint, so that'll help break up some of the reflection, but you can also just use a simple wet bar of soap and draw some designs on the window. This is a fun activity for kids, too. Okay. They can help you out making a mess. Uh, what about the idea of bird feeders? What's the best placement for them, for those that want to interact with the birds that love the birds? So the general rule of thumb is either really close or really far. So you want them within three feet of the window or further than 30 feet. Because if they're really close, the birds, you know, they'll have time to slow down before they approach the feeder. If they're really, really far away, they're not interacting with the window at all. Okay. And I know you've brought an example. If we're in the worst case scenario and we come upon, uh, upon a bird that has been injured, what is the best thing that we can do? at that point yeah so if you this is my example here this is a yellow rumped warbler it's stuffed beautiful. version it's beautiful <laughs> so if you find a bird that's hit a window strike oftentimes uh, they may seem like they're fine or they may be stunned so the best thing to do is to have a box ready so we've got our rescue box here with some air holes cut for the bird now uh, Francis, if you can get in close on this I look at these air holes and think are these actually big enough how do you know what's the the right size for the air holes what you want to do is make sure that there's enough air circulation but not so much that they could get their beaks in and start breaking themselves out oh okay so sometimes the smaller the better especially with the size of the right. bird you were showing earlier so okay. we want some good air circulation and what you can do is you can take any old, you know, I've got a pillowcase or a sheet. They make excellent wildlife rescue tools. And you can just gently drape it over the bird to help you kind of funnel them into that box. And make sure the box is, you know, you've got a tight lid so a shoe box works or Girl Guide cookies boxes actually work really well. Or making sure that that's really secure. 
and then you call our wildlife hotline to see if they need further help or next steps. Don't try to give them food or water because it could actually help them or harm them more than it can help them. Interesting. And what is, um, on average, the longest time they can stay in this box uh, before calling for help? Yeah, just generally up to an hour. You should try to call somebody for help and see what you should do for next steps. Okay, bc.spca.ca is the website for all kinds of resources to help. This is great information, Erin, thank you. Thank you. All right. Well